Yeah, you might go R and B on this. All right. Yeah, that's you might, good. You might like drop us something. <laughs> we might drop a track right after I this. I will All never right. find another lover <laughs> sweeter than you. <laughs> Sweeter than you. <laughs> Crispy. We needed that. <laughs> you need to put that in one of our stories. It goes old school, too. Welcome, everyone, to Here for the Health of It podcast. We are Columbia's hottest and fastest growing podcast. I'm Dr. Randy here with Dr. Tom, and we have a whale of a guest today. Mr. Meal. Perry. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't think of a whale noise. <laughs> that was a whale noise. Uh, we got Coach Perry Parks. He is the wide receiver coach of UNC Charlotte, and he's going to give us all his big tips today. How about it, baby? I didn't realize our podcast could get hotter than it was. This is big. This is massive. We got our video for this <laughs> dialed just because ah. it's a Perry. We want to get his... Salt and pepper. Oh, he's got a salt and pepper beard too. Skunk tail, it's back baby. to back. Two weeks in a row. Skunk he did tail. his hair too. Skunk tail. Mm. So, Perry, tell the like. I kind of want to go through your whole story of what Ooh. got you into coaching. Yep. So take us back to South Carolina boy, mm-hmm. born and raised. Yep. Take us through your kind of uh, athletic career, just briefly, because yeah, there's a lot yeah. of it's medals lot, and accolades. A lot of stuff, man. Uh, it's funny, man. Bo asked me the other night in the car. He's like, Dad, like, what did you want to be growing up? I'm like, oh. Man, here we go. You know, let me pour it to my son. And I'm like, you know, my dad was an insurance guy. I wanted to be a businessman, Bo. I wanted right. to be a business guy growing up. Yeah. And uh, he's like, what changed? I said, I was playing football, and I had a bad experience in high school with my high school coach. Uh, and towards the end of the season, I got to the point where I was, you know, doing everything right, led the team in receptions, tried to be a leader as I could. But uh, trying to get to school, like, just really didn't get the help and uh, support I felt like. I deserved after, you know, putting everything on the line for my university, well, my high school at the time. And um, I kind of had the feeling right there, hey, I'm going to be a high school coach. I'm going to come back and take over this program, my high school, and do it the right way. Um, And I just went to Coastal Carolina on a mission like, hey, you know, playing football is a bonus, but I want to be the head coach of of my high school. Um, And that was kind of the the mission and journey at, at the time. And I set all my focus and energy on uh, um, playing ball, doing things the right way, but then also set myself up to, to be a high school coach um, at an early age. And not just a coach, but I wanted to be a high school head coach. I kind of knew what I wanted to do. So uh, that's that's where I got the passion and, and, and energy for, for coaching from. Uh, you know, I was still actually playing high school ball at the time, kind of knowing that's what I wanted to do as a career. Was it Ridgeview High School? No, actually, it was Sumter High School. Okay. Uh, and my first head job was, <laughs> was our rival, uh, one of the rivals, in the town of Lakewood. So it wasn't kind of the caliber of uh, Sumter High School. But, uh, you know, I was just thankful for an opportunity to coach a, a program in my hometown. Yeah. Uh, so it was close, but not quite uh, Sumter High School. And when you were – so when their coach wasn't giving you the time that yeah. you wanted, were you letting them have it? Nah, like, you know, my mom and dad raised me the right way. And uh, even with my players today, there's a right and a wrong way to, to, to voice your frustrations per se. Um, but being a high school kid, you know, you really don't understand, you know, you got all this emotion, you know, you got your hormones kicking in, you know, you done got your first kiss or something like that, <laughs> a little bit more possibly in high school. And, and you know, you're kind of like trying to figure out who you are as a person. And it, and it just kind of, you know, you kind of start seeing stuff your mom and dad want you to see. And some kids got attention, like help recruiting, like same story the kids have today. Like, and then, you know, I felt like I got none of that. So I'm like, man, this is crazy. Uh, I remember asking, like, one of my coaches that, that played at Wake Forest, and I love him to this day, he's our quarterback's coach, he's like, hey, can I play college football? And he looked at me and said, absolutely. And, like, that was the motivation I needed. Like, cool, like, head coach might not believe it, but, you know, Coach West, you know, he says I can play. He played in the ACC at Wake Forest. So if he says I can, you know, I'm going to go try to do it. My receiver coach, Grayson Howe, same deal. Like, hey, can I do this? Like, absolutely. You know, he tried to help get me out uh, with one of his buddies that was the head coach in North Greenville at the time. So, uh, having coaches like that to say you can do it, like for me, like that's all I needed. Like I needed that validation of a guy that's done it or that coached me to say I can do it. Uh, I it just kind of hurt that the head coach didn't give me that validation. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to be a head coach that gives validation. Yeah. yeah. And so I guess if there's student athletes listening, what, what things do you recommend um, nowadays yeah. for them to be seen or if they were in a similar situation, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I guess everything's changed now because yeah. of social media, yeah. but, but now you're on the other side of it and you're, you're in college and you're looking at high school athletes. How do, what do they do to prep to, to, to meet you or to yeah. get recruited? I, I say, make sure you got to take care of 
of first things always first things first. Make sure that the academics are where they need to be. Um, that's always first and foremost with me. Like I'm not going to go out and try to recruit a kid that's not an intelligent kid, a kid that doesn't want to just do right because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, second thing I would say is make sure you're a good person too. I mean, you don't want to be around any turds. Right. Uh, like you get Randy. to the co- <laughs> you get to the college <laughs> level, man. The college level of coaching football has got to be somebody you trust. Uh, I'm not going to bring somebody. I'm not going to go actively recruit a kid that I can't trust because at the end of the day, like my job is going to be based off his performance. Yeah, I was wondering about like. So, do you ask the coaches about their their off the field yeah. stuff, like like yeah. character? It's a big that. question for sure. Ask about character, and then. You know, you find a couple teachers in the building, you know, because the coach is going to try to do everything he can to push his players. Mm-hmm. I was a high school coach, so I know the game. Right. Uh, but go ask guidance counselors. You know, ask an administrator if you see somebody. Ask a janitor, anybody in the school. Like, ask a, a student that, that may look like one of the ones that somebody might pick on a bully. Hey, do you know so-and-so? Especially right. if he's a big-time athlete. Yeah, I know him. Like, how is he? Yeah, Great yeah. guy. You know, or I don't know. You know, he kind of acts like he's too big for his britches. Like, just try to do your homework on these kids. I mean, uh, a zebra's not going to change his stripes. So write that down. Yeah, go ahead. Put that one in there. Man. <laughs> He's going to have a lot of them. A little gonna, I feel like there's going to be a lot of a writer little, downers. A little, little nugget, man. So uh, if, if that's what the kid is, that's what the kid's going to be. He's going to show you who he is. Yeah. And and because you now uh, you're not very tall, but just to tell the audience to play wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had to, I feel like, work extra mm-hmm. because typically guys your height, they're putting on defense to yeah. guard the wide receivers, yeah. correct? No doubt. Like, you see my dad, it'll, it'll piss you off. It pisses me <laughs> off every time I see my dad. <laughs> my dad's six four and a half, man. Like, <laughs> uh, so, so every time I see my dad, I just like, yeah, I'll leave, man. Mm-hmm. Worst genetics ever. So, <laughs> uh, so but, uh, but what's cool about that, I mean, it goes to show you, though, like you made it to the D1 yeah, yeah, level. Yeah. And, and do you want to share your height? Uh, on my license, I think I put five ten, uh, five <laughs> nine and a quarter, possibly. <laughs> With shoes, I think I'm shriveling up. Might be five eight right now. Uh, but yeah, like it's it's all about like effort and and what like I don't know. I, I believe I truly believe that life is what you you make it. Like mm-hmm. if you sit here and complain, you're just gonna complain. But if you want to be great, if you truly choose to be great, like just go make it happen. Right. Like just make it happen. I think the story will be a lot better. Uh, you know, if you start from the bottom and you really work your way up, and with that, no, no adversity. Nobody wants to hear it, man. It's not cool enough. There's no adversity. Yeah, it's true. And so, in the high school level, and it's interesting because yep. like, you were a football player, I was a hockey player, Tom was a soccer player. Yeah, we don't play hockey now, so bro. No, that's, so it's, it's a little different. Here. <laughs> Street hockey. Not when the Mighty Ducks here. came out, <laughs> but soccer, I we always thought of soccer players as softies, yeah, because they just fall and dive and pretend they're hurt when they're not hurt, yeah. And kind of in football and in hockey, yeah. Even if you're hurt, get like everyone's just like get up and get to the sidelines and nope. kind of pretend you're not hurt. Um, do you do you see that at all in in the football world where someone's pretending they're hurt and then the guys don't only don't time, like it? Only time that happens in football, and it's so funny. Like when we go hurry up, or somebody's going to hurry up on us, and we want to get like a little free time out, and this it's unethical. That was a point right. of emphasis in the NCAA this year, like the the, the fake injuries just to get like right. a cheap time out. But yep. uh, usually, most of the time, man, that's the one thing about football, and it's become a part where people like kind of you know fault the, the sport with the concussions and all that stuff, but. It's truly a sport where, you know, from an early age, at least when I was playing, you got to be tough, man. Uh, you still have to be tough to play the game. And, uh, you know, you got to be smart. Like, you don't want to tell kids to hold themselves out. There's a head injury. There's nothing like that. But uh, it's still a game that's built on blocking and tackling and protecting the football. So if you're not tough, man, like, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> and then so you you were a high school coach at, um, what was it, Forest? In Lakewood. Lakewood. And then, uh, Ridgeview. Yeah. And then Ridgeview. Yeah, and then Cedar Grove was my first in Atlanta. And then uh, Pebble Brook. And then uh, I got my first head job at Lakewood. And then uh, I got to go to uh, Ridgeview after kind of turning the Lakewood program yep. around. Yep, yep. And now you're on your path, or now you're in the on the college level. Yep. Talk to us about, like, what the next five years looks like. Like, do you want to stay at the college level? Yeah. Do you see yourself ever coming back to do some head coaching at, at the high school level? Yeah, no doubt. Well, like this year is like one of the craziest things I've ever seen before in my life, man. Uh, Cause you know, our head coach, coach Healy, man, great dude gave me an opportunity, got let go middle of the mm-hmm. season. Oh, so I didn't know that. everything was in flux. Um, they uh, just hired a new coach at Charlotte. So um, for the time being retained, but still don't know what that, what that right. looks like. So for me, um, you know, this occupation, so I got to do something. Uh, I love where I'm at. I love where we're building. Got a really strong group of receivers at Charlotte. Yeah. 
uh, kind of transform that room, put some core values in place. The guys are playing outside of their minds. Uh, we finished top 10 in two statistical categories in the nation, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so I love where I'm at, but you also want to grow. You know, uh, I chose to come the college route to kind of hit reset and try to climb the ladder again and uh, pursuit of that. And I, I love it, man. It's, it's fun. It's competitive. Uh, there's nothing like it. We got to play a, a game in old Wiggins Bryce this year, which was nuts. It was electric. Um, but I love it, man. There's nothing like, you know, being the guy in the arena, man. Like, people pay to come see you compete. And just to understand the full body of work, what really goes into it right. at this level, to see it, uh, it's been fun, man. It's been amazing. Yeah. So, go back high school, possibly, but I want to ride this thing to these wheels fall just off keep on the college going. level. And so, like, if, if kids want to be a coach, mm-hmm. so um, – I think you told me about you go to these coaching conferences and things like that. What are some of the steps like outside of, I know that Madden was a big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Mark, hey, ask Mark Lasby about NCAA back in the day, man. He's talking how you can play. I busted his <laughs> well, ass. Because, so. I mean, that's exactly like when we were growing up, it was it was Tecmo where you had four yeah. plays. And it was like that. That's not really helping us become a coach. No, but no. then when Madden started getting all these yeah. things in NCAA, like there were a lot of things that you just started realizing like like I and I I didn't understand a lot of this, but like yeah. nickel and dime, but you oh, so you yeah. kind of start seeing explain that. Explain that to me. Explain what, what you're so, taking. So here's what I think. Is. Oh man. Oh, well, nickel. So here's what I think. Nickel is. It could be a run pass option. So you kind of have some speed and some meat. Oh my gosh. Is that right? I cannot wait to get this video of this podcast. <laughs> now dime is like pa- they're gonna pass. Yeah. So yeah. So you drop back. Okay. Um, is, well, so is that not nickel? It's close. All right. They're both personnel base. Okay. All right. So when you think of nickel, it's speed it's, and meat, it, well, speed and meat. Uh, you have a nickel back, a guy that can force the run, but can still be okay in coverage dime. Now you're going to bring another extra DB for sure. So yeah. just, just think. Yeah. Like I, that's, yeah, it depends. I generally just pick nickel most of the time unless I it was like, <laughs> it was like a third and long. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We need a football podcast. Out of you guys. <laughs> we do. So is, is nickelback a football term? Are you thinking of? I'm thinking, thinking of the of band. I think in the band might have been a, named a, after a football a nickel, term. A nickelback. Yes, it, it could be. Yeah. yeah. Kind of hybrid safety body type. All right. Yeah. Now, who do you. So when you were doing these like. I guess going through the coaching stuff, like where'd you pull inspiration from? Like who was your yeah. mentors? Who were, were there books? Were there people that you? No doubt. So uh, a big one, you guys have played golf with him a couple of times, man. Old David Ben. I, <laughs> I was on the phone with Coach Bennett before you guys got here. I talked to this dude like two or three times a He's week. He's great. So uh, really didn't like, you know, when I knew that I was going to wanted to get into coaching, like I, I knew how important every team meeting was in college. Like every time he brought the group together, like I was kind of studying his mannerisms and how that is. And like I, when I was just getting into it as a high school position coach, you know, I was definitely the hard ass, you know, attention to detail. Um, really not trying to be their friend because I was so young. So I was just trying to just be really hard, really tough on them. Right. Uh, and then when I became like starting getting to get into O coordinator roles, I had to take a different role where I started coaching coaches, like on the scheme and development of what we're trying to do as offense. Right. Uh, and then when I became a head coach, um, and I was like the youngest head coach in the state of South Carolina at the time, I had no clue. I thought I had all the answers. Uh, and it was completely different because now I'm running a program. I'm coaching all of my coaches, varsity, JV. Um, I'm in charge of these kids, these parents. Like, it was a lot. So – uh, the 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 stuff that I took from Bennett about how and just to treat people fair, try to do right at all times, that stuff's the stuff that I ended up leaning on because my first two years at Lakewood, we were terrible, son. Right. We won three games in two years. Like, that's right. bad. That's like, hard. the first year we won one, all right, I said, man, it's awful, but I'm rebuilding. You know, you always have an excuse as a coach. <laughs> I mean, you listen to the coaches, like, after they lose a game. Like, always rebuilding. I got it. Yeah, you know, I had all the excuses. So, second year, we changed everything, man. I came to – you know, hire some new coaches, you know, put more work in than I did my first year as a head coach. And uh, we won the first game. We won the second game. We won everything. We lost everything else. So I'm like, golly, like I, yeah. I suck. <laughs> like, uh, looking in the mirror, like I've, I've already ran out of all of my coaching excuses in two years. So uh, one of my good buddies, Reggie Kennedy, uh, left Sumter High School to take the job over at Irmo. And I call Reggie. I bet, hey, man, hire me as an offensive coordinator, man. I'm a great OC. And he's like, he's like, no. He's like, you know, like – You'll be all right. Like, you're almost there. Right, right. And I couldn't see the forest for the trees. And that third year, um, you know, uh, was the year that I actually kind of, like, got over the hump. Yeah. And we actually got them in the playoffs. And yeah. then I got an opportunity to come to Ridgeview. So 
it was tough, man, because you put in all that work and you want that instant gratification. That's how life is. You know, you might be that close to that big break and you don't know it. And you're ready to pack it up. And sure. You know, it might be one year away. Well, and that's what's always tough to see is like, especially high school, college, like you have to develop kids from what, seventh grade? Like, did yeah. you start, did you start when you first got into the head coach role? Mm -hmm. Did you start programs for middle school? Yeah. Because that's, I feel like where you're, you're starting to set that foundation yeah. and then it would take three, four years yeah. to actually see those kids start to. Yeah. And that was the toughest part about being in Columbia because you really couldn't do anything with the middle school kids. But they don't in, allow that? Nah, because like we're in a choice district in Richland too, so. They think uh, it might be some type of uh, some type of recruiting. Uh, it's crazy, man. But in, in in Sumter, you can actually build a program from the ground up because, like, I was and everybody's doing it now. But I was one of the first guys to do like a middle school signing day. Like, let those guys know, like, hey, we're excited to have you. Like, oh, that's you know, cool. Yeah, we did middle school night where they wear their jerseys, come to the games, all of that stuff. Anything to kind of get those guys, you know, bought into the process of being part of this team, the bigger picture of the team. Uh, get the mom and dads involved, the family, because, you know, you really want to build a program, you know, and encompass the community in that program. That's how you do it the right way. Right. Yeah. Like setting the culture. No and, doubt. And, well, and, and I remember you being big on, like, getting sponsorships. Yeah. Like, tell well, tell uh, tell the listeners about that. Like, how do you communicate with Nike or, yeah, yeah. or Jordan or I like, whatever? I like, like to talk to people, man. Yeah. I, I, like, I like to talk to people. And I got some, I got some really good people in my corner. Shout out to my girl, Shauna Toy. She's she's with Nike, climbing the ladder as we speak. Yeah, uh, and I just got in front of people with my dream and my vision and my passion. And we were one of the first schools in South Carolina to get the Jordan deal over. Right. Street, man. Like, who does that? It was like, crazy. Yeah, like so. Uh, it's it's all about communication. Uh, I feel like as a head coach, as a leader of men, if you can get somebody to believe your vision, that's half the battle. Um, I've made a living for myself and my family uh, doing that. So. Going into a business, you still have to have the same confidence as I'm calling a play on fourth down to win the game. Um, and like I said, it's a different approach to life. Like, it's just the way that, you know, person A, like, yeah. goes about his everyday life versus what I do. I feel like I'm competing every day, uh, especially in this this cutthroat world of college football. Mm -hmm. Like, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Yeah, right. And there's no such thing as staying the same. Right. So, like, I want to win each day. So for me, like that's you know going out there competing and doing uh, the best I can do and trying to get better each and every day. Yeah, nice. And so, what was the? Because you got head head coach of the year when you were at Ridgeview, yeah, right? Yeah, so that was my second year at Ridgeview. Yeah, second year at Ridgeview, I yeah. got four A four A Upper State Coach of the Year for that deal. And and what happened from going like I suck yeah. to getting Coach of the Year in two years or whatever I, it was. It's so crazy. Like, we talk about process a lot in football. Like, the process didn't change. Now, <laughs> I surrounded myself with a couple better Jimmys and Joes, you know. So, uh, got some better players around me for sure, but stayed true to what I was doing. And uh, it's funny, like, you know, you go to these message boards and you see the stuff, the outside noise, and uh, it's really cool because I always use it for motivation. Uh, and you see the guys that say, you know, this guy's a terrible coach. He has no no, no shot at getting this job or he shouldn't have got this job. And then when you do it, and then it goes from that to everybody in the Columbia area calling and saying, hey, like, hey, you want to come here? I got a job for you. It's like, it's kind of weird. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then you, you kind of be loyal to the people who gave you that opportunity, Dr. Mac, um, Dr. Mac Foxworth at, uh, at Ridgeview and uh, – um, Brian Rosefield, David uh, Gordon, the guys that hired me there and my staff. And we were able to build something special. I mean, people went from real quick saying, man, this guy, you know, barely won at Lakewood. What's he doing getting a 4A, 5A job at the time at Ridgeview? Uh, he's in over his head to, man, this guy's a pretty good coach. Like, hey, you know, he needs to take this job. Like, all the people that doubted you telling me what yeah, you need to do They love next. you right so, away. Hey, it's crazy, man, but you just got to be true to yourself and understand, you know, if you have that confidence – uh, I mean, yourself and ability, you just go out there and do it. Now, um, dealing with parents, I kind of want to, I want to hit on that. Like yeah. when you, I, I imagine, <laughs> it, it, well, do you, well, even right now, do you deal with it at the college level? Uh, I not, imagine like, not so much. Okay. I mean, you still have some, but it's not right. Like high school. So a little different level. Yeah. yeah high school. So yeah. are there any, um, I mean, are there any crazy stories that you think about or, or more so like, how did you handle yeah. parents and were there were there were there always parents that were just all over you on play was it yeah, playing yeah, time yeah, and yeah. we don't like I mean first day expectations are everything for me so we would always like hey this is my program like I want to win games the best players gonna play I said but in the same aspect I have three kids 
Like, like I became a different coach when I had my when I had Bo. Right. Because like I used to be a hard ass, still, still, you know, tough. But yeah. I didn't care. Like until I had a kid, and I'm like, oh, it's a little different. Right. So I, I tell him, I said, I want the best, you know, for your kid. I have three kids. I understand. Like. My son is the best. Boaz is the best. Boaz can whip Connor's ass and build a Legos right now, cuz. I'm telling you straight up. <laughs> telling you straight up. Like, that's, no, that's fair. That's, I mean, that's that's, that's what he is. He's like, my son is the best. At what, that's, those are my eyes. Right, you know, right, that's, right. That's, that's that's how I feel. And, <laughs> and like, I get it as a parent, but at the same sense, like, you got to be realistic. Yep. You know, you got to be realistic. Boaz might not ever play football. Right. I'm cool with that. Sure. You know, but uh, I made sure the parents know that. And uh, it, it's kind of tough because you have some parents that think, you know, they know more football than damn John Madden. Right. Uh, so one of the cool things we did at Ridgeview, man, we would we would, you know, watch film with dads on Sundays. If you felt like, you know, really? Johnny Johnny wasn't doing what he needed to do or he should have got more touches, you know, come on come on in and, and let's 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 watch football together. Let's watch film together. Yeah, that's uh, cool. And one thing I learned from Bennett and every other coach said the eye in the sky is not gonna lie. So right. with the camera, like we videotape everything and hey, you know, Hey, your son right here is supposed to, you know, read corner for us. You know, he's supposed right. to block the safety that's coming down in the alley. You know, he's running off right here. The safety makes the play. Like, why didn't he? Why didn't he do that? Like, right. You didn't see this play. Yeah, yeah. And then pops is probably like, you know, oh, he blocked this guy. I'm like, all right, we'll point at the safety, and then the dad goes and points at the outside linebacker. You know, right. so stuff like that. Like, right. You kind of can like, you know, without trying to embarrass uh, embarrass the parent, but you kind of let them know like, hey, man, like, let you me do what I'm good yeah. at, and you do what you're good at, and uh, I promise you I want the best for your kid, but he's got to got to do what the team needs him to do. You guys haven't been involved in any like altercations where parents come out. And- no, man. I, I think I think that comes down to uh, I've, I've seen it. Of course, yeah. you've seen it, you hear about it, but I think right. it comes down to expectations and communication. Like I said, we have two parent meetings a year, yeah, and we try right. to we try to alleviate all that stuff before it happens. Yep. Have you seen the movie, or I guess it's a show too, Friday Night Lights? Oh yeah, and classic. How, so how close is that to your actual life? It's TV, <laughs> TV, and uh, and and like all Americans, another one. Like, it's TV. It's cool. You see things that they try to incorporate, but I mean, it's made to get you to sit on the couch and watch and it. watch it. Yep. You know, uh, but it's cool. Like, I mean, sometimes I still pinch myself realizing what I get to do, uh, because it's 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 pretty. It's it's a fun job. It's stressful, but it's it's fun, man. There's nothing like uh, on the college level, you know having a police escort of like 12 police cars and like four motorcycles. And, you know, we're driving down streets that I drive all the time, Bluff Road. Yeah. And you see these Gamecock fans out here like taunting you on the road. Like, I, I, I still get chill. That's probably one of my, my better football memories um, this past year. Like, that environment was just nuts, man. Night game, williams right. Bryce, That was awesome. ESPNU. Yeah. Like, it's, it was crazy, man. So, like, it's, I got – Got paid to do that. Right. Like, come on, right. like, <laughs> right. you know. So at the end of the day, I just keep it relevant. Like, get paid to coach football, man. I enjoy it. Um, tell tell us about like what does a college level practice look like? What, mm-hmm. What's this? What's the schedule um, for coaches, and then also yeah. for the players? Man, like, so we have some late nights now. I'm not going to even lie to you about that. So the our schedule is completely different than the player schedule. Uh, we're a morning operation, so our guys get in like they they have weigh ins at like seven a.m. They uh, weigh in? Yeah, weigh in. They weigh in, weigh out. So we keep track of all of that stuff. Really? As far as their body weights, make sure that they're eating, make sure that they're not, you know, uh, especially early camp practice, susceptible to heat, exhaust, sure. anything like that. Uh, but we keep keep the weigh-ins for accountability, making sure they're, they're in the facility early enough. Uh, we have breakfast for them, and then we usually start with a uh, team meeting, uh, 8 o'clock. That's about 15 minutes. Goes into special teams for another 15 minutes, and then we have uh, position meetings for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. After position meetings, we're on the field, like 9, 55, 10 o'clock. Uh, practice is efficient. We're only on the field for probably an hour and 35 in a regular season yeah. deal. Um, but, like, I'm talking about we're five-minute periods and we're moving, like, it's nonstop. So you get a lot of stuff done. You get a lot of reps in there. And then uh, as coaches, we go up, shower, watch film. Uh, the kids eat lunch after that. They take off, go to class, class in the afternoon. Uh, but we'll watch film. Uh, practice, we'll take a small lunch break, come back about 3.30 for a staff meeting, and then after that we're game planning. Like, and game plan from like 3.30 to 11.30, 12 night. And when you say that, like, so essentially are you looking at a team, like, so say you're playing the game Gamecocks, mm-hmm. or when you guys played the game Gamecocks, yep. what do you, you look at their previous films, you look at, the, you're looking at their, their def, and you're on yeah. your end, you're looking at their, like, defensive mm-hmm. tendencies, if mm-hmm. they line up this way. Yeah. What, um, like, 
is there anything new nowadays? Like you almost, I almost feel like there can't be that much um, that's changed mm -hmm. over the years. Like what? I say analytics. So one thing that we do, uh, and like I'm knock on wood, I don't know if it's knock on wood or whatever. My career path was different. So I was able to leapfrog being a GA. Like God bless those guys because they're a week ahead of us with their work. So they have everything, all of the data, all of the stuff, the information, they have it broken down the week before. GA is a uh, graduate assistant. Okay. Yep. So yep. guys that are finished playing, uh, and they have like two years to kind of work as like understudy or sure. kind of help us. Uh, they do a lot of the grunt work. Uh, but those guys have all of the information already broke down a week ahead of the time. So what we do is we'll watch all the previous games and individual individual studies like Sunday or I catch a break on lunch, I'll be in there watching the previous game. But those guys have all of the third downs, first downs, all of the blitzes. They have all that stuff already cut for us. Like the plays that they run yeah, on so those downs. Okay. We compare that to the analytics if there's anything new, but um game planning is game planning. Like yeah. high school, the high school level, this is the different part. High school level, you usually have like Sunday, you get all your work done on Sunday because you play Friday. Right. You gotta kind of squeeze that all together. College, like it's a work in progress. So we start the plan on Sunday, uh, but we get into uh, first downs, drive openers on Monday. Um, Tuesdays are um, more or less kind of third down, yeah, like yeah. pressure type deal. And then uh, Wednesdays, red zone, low red coming out. So it's like a work in progress. You build into it, and then you kind of have your plan fully together by Thursday. And then Friday. when it comes to like these playbooks, they're pretty thick, right? Mm -hmm. how, as a, say a wide receiver, yeah. what all do they need to know? Yeah. And like how complex is that? Yeah. Yeah. So you start with your base install um, and then you build, you build everything off of your base install. Your base install is not going to change. Um, that's, I mean, trying to put it in, in layman's terms, that's probably six, six or seven, uh, different variations of a run play. Okay. Um, and like variations mean different plays because you take inside zone, we have inside zone, we have a mid zone, wide zone. So yeah, yeah. That's one variation of inside zone. Uh, and then you have your counter series, you have your outside, your stretch plays, speed sweeps, stuff like that. And then pass concepts, you probably have, say, probably 12 pass concepts in a base install. Okay. Um, that's curl flat, that's your crossers, that's your meshes, that's your verticals. Um, then you have your chunks. You have about four or five chunk plays to get the ball down the field. Right. Uh, you have your two minute is in your base stall. You have your four minute, your, your take your time offense in your base install. And then you have your tempos when we want to play fast gotcha. in your base install. So then you go into a game week, you might not use everything that's in your full offense, yeah. but then you might tweak something. You might tweak one of your concepts. Well, so I was wondering, like, when you watch a game and you see on the sideline they're holding up these poster boards yep. and there's, like, pictures of, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a cartoon and a, and a you know, banana. And yeah. What 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 does it's, any of that uh, mean? So, once again, I was naive to the fact that you got guys that are stealing signals in college like none other. One of my good friends, uh, Tyler Chad with Coach Our Tight Ends, he's the best that I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> I'll never forget our first game. We're playing Duke. Uh, we're playing Duke, uh, my first college football game, and I'm standing beside him. He's on the sideline, and, like, I'm just trying to coach, but I'm watching it. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like, I'm coaching against Duke. <laughs> and, uh, like, they're on they're on offense, so we're off the field. And, like, he's calling out every single play. I'm like, damn, son, he's been watching film. Like, this right, dude, like, right. he's, and I'm like, man, how are you doing? Like, I'm like, no, how are you doing this, son? He's like, oh, man, I've, I've ripped their signals. And, like, son, he's, like, batting a 1,000. Wow. He's calling out everything they're doing before they're doing it. And as long as you can see, like that's legal. If you're, yeah, I mean, I mean, you, yeah. So the so the yeah. job of you guys to call these plays is you have to you have to change things up to to throw people exactly. off. Exactly. So like you see somebody with the poster board, that can be dummy, it can be live. You can right. see the signal. Like we have three signalers at Charlotte, so you don't know who's live. You don't know who's calling what. Gotcha. So a lot of that stuff you see on TV. If you look too on TV, you see the guys now with the big screens behind. Yes. Them. Yep. So for the guy that's videoing from the backside, you can't see it. If you're across the field, you can see everything they're doing. Right. But if you're behind them and they have the screen, you really can't see what's going on. Yeah, I was so, wondering about. I know yeah, it's was, it's crazy, man. That's a big deal in college. And I'm like, man, like. Well, well, and then, but then, like the like the head. Well, I had two questions. Mm -hmm. How many people are on the headsets? Number mm -hmm. one, like during a game. Yeah. And then two, like how hard would it be to tap into the headsets? Yeah, they're secure lines. Are but they? Then you got guys that uh, have headsets with no mics on it. They can just listen in it, not okay. interject. But all of the full time guys have microphones and they can interject. Is what's that going like on. ten people? 
Uh, yeah, ten and like you know you got guys up top in the box. Right. Um, what's what's crazy about that too? Like, I mean, you have high school guys. Like, I was strict on the headsets. Like, hey man, like, only talk if you need to talk. Man, you got right, guys right. Just talking to hear themselves talk. Like, you know, mute your mic. Like nobody, because it's it's like I, I couldn't imagine calling a game in college and you're trying to you know trying to analyze what's going on, try to sequence your plays, and you got somebody just. Talking about something that's right. irrelevant, or it can be something relevant, but there's a time and place, like in between series, to, to kind of get that out there. That's but, what I want, yeah. Because like, if the head coach has something to say, but there's so mm-hmm. much other chatter, like how does that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think there needs to be a direct line uh, in between the head coach and the coordinators for sure, like no doubt about it. And then uh, we have two channels on offense, so like the offensive line, those guys kind of talk on channel B, mm-hmm. and then like the main offense is on channel A. I don't say anything to our OC unless it's in between drives. Like, hey, what do you think about this? Or, hey, we're getting this type of leverage by the corner. Um, what do you think about changing this route? Like, that's how I communicate in between drives. I, I don't say anything to the OC in between right. the drive because I know, like, I've done that before. Not at that, that level, but, right. like, I'm trying to keep my, my, my eyes focused on the game, what's going on, and, like, get a rhythm for the game and not worry about answering an off-the-wall question. Yep. Uh, it's not time or place for that. And you probably work quite a bit with the quarterback and the quarterback mm-hmm. coaches. Yep. So I would imagine there's times when the quarterback, you see him in practice and you're yeah. like, something's off. And then someone says, yeah, he's in a fight with his girlfriend. <laughs> so then you have to change. You make the plays different based yeah. on how on point he is. Or, you know, he's just focused and you're like, all right, we're going to run whatever we want. And he's going to put it right in their hands. Yeah, you guys have seen our, our quarterback, man. He uh, He's leaving us. He was a COVID super senior, Chris Reynolds, man. He was a pro. Uh, he's a really, really good player, talented kid, great communicator. Uh, he's an excellent leader of men, uh, just a, a fun guy to be around. Uh, he'll definitely be missed in the Charlotte program. But the cool thing about Chris, like you said, like he he wasn't that, like he, he was a football guy, you know what I'm saying, especially this extra year. So he's in the office like us, man, preparing like a, like a true pro and – his preparation was super special in the way that he attacked it. And you could you could see like like you said, like you're around those kids so much. Like you could really see if like my receivers if one of my guys are having a bad day, I could tell when they walk in the building. Yeah. Like cause you get that true feel of what's going on with them. But uh to Chris's part, man, like he didn't have many bad days. He's joking through for ten thousand yards in his career Jeez. Charlotte. That's cool. That's wild. Ten racks. That's nuts. That's crazy. Um or go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask about being married. So you're married to a chiropractor, yep. Yep. Dr. Katie mm-hmm. Parks. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm curious what that – you guys are both kind of driving in your own yeah. fields, and I'm curious yeah. what that dynamic's like and how it, it looks. It is so crazy, man. I, 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 it was When we got engaged, she was still in school. All right, and then – That was in Atlanta. In Atlanta. She was at Life, and I had just moved back to take a head You high met her at a job. club. Lounge. Lounge. Yeah. Okay. Lounge. Did you have an opening line? What's up, baby she girl? Was, she winked was, at her. She was swerving these dudes left and right. And like I said, just the, the confidence of a lion. Like, hey, like, what are we doing here? Like, I'm not trying to dance with you because you ain't going to tell. I'm too cool for you to tell me. No, straight up. Like, let me get you a glass of water. Let me get you, like, joke was on me. It was like, like a $20 glass of uh, Voss. Was that, right. that water? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, in the glass, glass tube. I'm like, man. I would have done better getting a little three dollar Bud Light, <laughs> but uh, it was funny, man. Like that's that's who I am. Like loving to talk to people. So she could have told me get lost, kick rocks, but she didn't. She was thirsty for that water, that twenty dollar bottle of water, uh, and the rest is history. But uh, getting into that dynamic, man. Like she was still in school, I was a high school head coach, so I was I was the breadwinner right mm-hmm. off the bat. Like, right. hey, right. this is it. Like I'm gonna be the greatest coach of all time, greatest yep. high school coach of all time. Uh, and then, like, you guys, uh, Sarah and Mark, like, y'all came here and, like, put your your thumbprint on Columbia, and it took off the way it took right, off. Right, right. So there's a little paradigm shift, like, yo, bread. I'm the breadwinner. <laughs> and that's Kenny would say, I'm like, oh, whoa. <laughs> you know? So so for me, I'm like, uh, like hey, just support, you know, yeah, just yeah. support each other, support each other. And then I got to Ridgeview and started winning games. And then, like, at Ridgeview, it was competition. Right. Now. Like, she right. was doing well, then have a 10-win season and get a little bit more money. Mm-hmm. Like, so start doing that. And then uh, the Charlotte job came open. And, like, okay, that put me in a different ball game. And then she got staked right. to another ball game. Right. So uh, the cool thing about it, man, is just to be able to provide for uh, Boaz, Lola, and Zoe. 
Uh, she's comfortable. I'm comfortable. There's, there's no pressure yet. So mm-hmm. I'm able to to kind of coach still for the love of it and not, like, be fearful of, you know, this is it. Because, like, I mean, you can't you can't coach college football and say, golly, I'm worried if I'm going to get terminated. Like, this year, like, I went through it this year, and I think I was able to handle it knowing that our family has such a, a stronghold here in Columbia area in this region that no matter what happens, like things will be fine. Right. Like, feel like God's going to have a plan regardless. And I was able to coach at this level. Sure. Where they can tell me to get my stuff and get up out of there tomorrow. And like, I'm right. like, man, like, man, that was awesome. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all perspective based, but, um, I'm to the point where I want to, I want to be able to work where if she doesn't want to work, she doesn't have to, mm-hmm. uh, which is cool. And I think that that'll, that'll open up some more doors for, for us as a family to kind of get back under the same roof, hopefully in the next, uh, like hopefully soon, like uh, near future to where we can kind of, you know, kind of grow and kind of get back on that. Cause this, you know, back and forth here in Charlotte, that's, it's tough, you know, mm-hmm. it's tough, but like I said, for the opportunity, you know, what's your opportunity cost? Like, what are you willing to get up, give up to, to get where you ultimately want to be? And for me, when coach Ely said, Hey, you know, let's do it. Like I want to give you opportunity to coach college football, like I'm coming, like let's go. Like, so uh, it was definitely worth it. But the dynamic part is it's, it's pretty cool. Cause Seen, seen us both wear different different roles, and uh, right now, like you guys, like she, like her, I think they're talking about you know just still still expanding and growing. Like they're killing it over there too. So uh, I support it, I endorse it, and you know when I'm when I'm not coaching football, and you know I'm a you know stay at home dad, mm-hmm. <laughs> partially whatever she yeah. needs me to do. If I need to go mm-hmm. pick the kids up, take them to practice or dance or gymnastics, whatever it is, I I'm willing to do that and enjoy enjoy doing it. Nice. Um, let's go back to swag real quick Ooh. because some of the things that people wear and coach Bennett has a mm. famous video on his, on, mm. uh, on YouTube yep. about you guys dressing like cats or acting like, cat, acting like cats me. because you like to just dress up and well, your you team at the time. Like cats? So he, he is, you have to watch this and we should probably link it in there. Cause it's amazing. It's like a famous, he loses his mind on an interview saying we need more dogs. Because my team's a bunch of cats. Oh, mm. that's good. And that, that was pa- that was when Perry's at Coastal Carolina. But I think what he, and he was referencing like they're they're wearing their elbow pads, their their sleeves, their mm-hmm. you know their. What is the point of some of that stuff too? Because I like it made me think like I see these people that will yeah. have like all that. Is it just for like the look and like the well the the great Dion Sanders, aka Coach Prime. Yeah. If you look good, you play good. Mm-hmm. If you play good, they pay good. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. Like, you gotta, you gotta feel. You have to feel, even like I can't play no more. So coaching wise, like, I mean, man, this game is gonna be on ESPN. You, like, right? I, I can't go out there with this. So you know, like <laughs> that, and like, it might be the position I coach receivers. Right. Like we, some of my guys, I won't let them out in the locker room if they ain't looking right. Really? So I can't, I can't attest to what Bennett was talking about because when I was at Coastal, <laughs> certified dog, like, I, and, and still was looking damn good, certified, out there. Dog. looking sweet in my gear out there, you know, <laughs> make sure the visor was cleaned off and gloves were good, you know, like, so I, I think it's all about a swag, especially playing the position of receiver. Right. I can't speak for a quarterback, offense line, running back, but playing what I played in college and where it is now, you gotta look sweet out there. Yeah. Like, if you don't feel sweet about what you got on. Like you ain't coming out swinging. I get it. I mean, and you can't you can't let it consume you. But right. I mean, you gotta have a little bit of something. Right. But so for the most part, it's not for um, performance enhancement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally so the girls in the stands oh, and, man. and people look at you like, oh, yeah, look good. I I used to have a saying at uh, at Coastal, our equipment guy yeah, was Wilson Beaver. We were FCS. So we we're Division One AA. So we're not the big boys. We're like right in the middle. They're 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 swinging the big boys now, but. I used to have a saying, especially when I start making plays. You know, I yeah. had caught little two game winners. You know, yeah. saying beat James Madison on the national stage. Like, so when I got some rank, you know, because yeah. I was a walk on, I had to prove myself. But my my last two years, I'm like, hey man, I need a fresh pair of gloves. He's like, man, Perry every week, and I said, man, after you know, catch a couple pounds, I'm throwing the kid in the stands, man, I'll make his day. So I need some fresh ones, yeah. you know. Yeah. So just a little stuff like that, man. It's all about confidence, man. Especially that level. If if you take the field with confidence, man, anything can happen. Your preparation is there. Yeah. You put the time in during the week. So now it's just about how can I feel my best at game day. Yep. If feeling my best is looking good, then that's what it is. Yep. Would you say you're at your pinnacle when you threw Perry Luther King Day on ooh, your birthday? Ooh, 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 ooh. 
<laughs> no, if the listeners know how's the curveball. <laughs> you weren't ready. Right you didn't know I knew about oh, that. Oh, man. Did you? Man. I mean, back in college. How about that? You used if to- the walls could talk at Coastal Carolina, <laughs> that was the day. That was a true birthday party that I threw for my 21st birthday. Probably was the best party in Coastal Carolina history. It's the, Yeah. I bet they still talk about that stuff. I performed, I performed a rap single. At that birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, an original or did oh, you? Oh, it was original. You had an original? Had hits no back way. in the days, huh? Oh, man. Had we had need, we we need, need to record. Yeah, we need you to record that. My mom that. laughs all the time because, like, I had a computer and it crashed. It had all of my, like, all of that stuff, man. <laughs> I made a song. I made a song and we played it for pregame warm ups for the no receivers. Way. Coach, um, it was. The stuff that we did at Coastal Carolina when we played for Coach Bennett, it was, it was truly <laughs> legendary. And he let us, uh, he let us do it. Like, yeah. Hey, coach, I got a song. Make sure there's no cussing in it, squizzle. Like, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> like, sure enough, like, we're out here warming up for a game, and I hear my song go over there. I'm like, wow, this is there pretty. There it is. This is it, man. That, what what about the that? things that you put under underneath your eyes when you're little, out there? Little eye black. I, I used to see games. that everywhere. Yeah, I had a couple no games one... with eye black. They don't yeah. work. They yeah. look cool. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's for the look. I always thought that. Yeah, People look, pretended like it was they the look, look. They look cool, but they don't work, but... And Good what about tinted sure. visors? Are those allowed? They took them away. They did. Yeah, I had to clear Oakley one though. That's still the why bubble did, one. Why did they take them away? Just I don't know. That's back when the U was popping. Like Miami yeah. had everybody. Like we we wish we could have played with them. Yeah, Dion um, had a tinted visor. Yeah, like a lot of the like Devin Hester. Like you get yeah, to leave, yeah. do whatever you want to do. But like there were guys that had them in college when, I, when we were coming up, and they kind of took it away. Like right when I got to college. Right. Yeah. Um, any rituals or anything that happened like for fre- like freshmen when they come in? that uh like to to be a part of the team nah they kind of like especially nowadays they've done away with a lot of that stuff um we would do like a little talent show when i was playing um we did like just some different stuff like get a teammate like get a couple facts about him and come like introduce your teammate stuff like that like more team building stuff uh every night in team camp we have like a speaker if it's not one of the coaches uh it's somebody from the community uh in charlotte and then also uh we would let some of the um, the players get up there and talk to some of the seniors, but no, no like rituals or anything like that. Yeah, kind of get away with that stuff nowadays. And then, and then, uh, now that you're at the college level too, are there are there guys on your team that they've um, the name, image, and likeness stuff yeah. where, where college kids are getting sponsorships and paid? Yeah. What are you seeing with that? And like, is that affecting the team if there are certain players like the quarterback or whoever? Yeah. How do, how's that working? I think, I think looking? Charlotte is going to be uh, with the new coach, Coach Biff Poggi, uh, that got hired. He's going to have a different plan for the NIL. Okay, uh, it's going to be pretty cool to try to get a collective going and, and kind of spread the wealth with everybody on the for team. The full team. But um, this year was more or less like couple like a float spa. Chris had one of that. Yeah. Uh, you just have some like couple just like, random yeah, just stuff. Random stuff. Okay. Really no true substance with it. But I think if you do it the right way, it could provide some benefit, especially sure. the guys you have. You want to—I mean, we have some really good players there. You want to be able to make sure they feel like you know right. they're, they're taken care of, uh, especially when everybody else is doing it. Kind of well, try to level the playing. That's field. what I was wondering. Like, so these massive schools like Alabama yeah. are what? What are there levels to this? Is there certain I, I things would, that I would say, of course, just like anything else, uh, and that's why the NCAA had to kind of step back. Like, well, how are we gonna how are we gonna Regulate govern it, this? Yeah, yeah because. I mean, you just look at resources, uh, the resources that a school like Alabama right. will have versus, let's just say, Kent State, just mm-hmm. talking in obscurity, like two different, like, random schools. Like, right. it's probably three or four times the resources that that one school has compared to what they have. So yeah. it's kind of tough, man. But uh, just got to find find guys that fit, guys that want to be there, want to be part of the culture. And then, you know, to be realistic to what like what your NIL is worth and what is it based off of. Gotcha. I think that's what it comes is down to. Is that something the coach though regulates quite a bit where he could say like, no, you can't have an individual deal? I don't, or I don't I don't know. And like I don't know yeah. if a coach would want to get into telling a guy no versus what right. somebody else might be telling a guy. What would you if you were back in college yeah. and you could get paid, what would you how would you market yourself? Uh you know what? Like would they should they go around like I wonder, like to should this, they start going around to this business? To this and, day I still feel like I have elite hands. Mm-hmm. So all state, you know, they're and my dad was a state farm oh. guy, but you know, you're in good hands. I'm yes. like, look, like my body of work. I've got two game winners in the last two years. <laughs> one was versus the number one team in the nation at the time, right? Like, like I mean, what That's can you perfect? What you. can you do for me? That you know, is. especially yeah. here, just by the university, like you know, right. a right. small viewing area that understands my body of work. But like, what what can we do? Like, right. is, is there like anything that. like? And I'm so I'm curious then about the other side of it, like the yeah. business owner. 
how would they offer it? What's the value? Like, Cause, yeah. Well, because we've yeah. talked about that yeah. before. Like someone is a volleyball player yep. at USC and wants yep. to do it. And we just look at them like, we don't know what that means yep. or how to do that. We've never done anything like this For before. any of the, the volleyball players at USC listening. <laughs> yeah. Columbia get family you, chiropractic come get, <laughs> come get you an IL deal. Come get you an IL deal. I think it's whatever provides the the value to the business. Mm-hmm. So that was my deal. Like going back to like you said, being in businesses as a high school head coach raising money. Right. I want to give value to you guys. Right. So yes, I'm asking for twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. But how can we help you? Like sure. there is like the package can be whatever you want the package yeah. to be. Yeah. Well, and I think, and I think I remember when you, when you got like the Nike, like the, the, the kids felt hope. I mean, in the oh, sense yeah. of like, you're not, I, when we were growing up, it was hand me down jerseys. Yeah. yeah. So to like get new, fresh Nike stuff and, yeah. and like paid for, that's yeah. remarkable at that, at that age. Yeah, it was huge cool. for sure. Um, let me see if there's anything else I got. Oh, I got to touch on. So if I want to get a tattoo of myself <laughs> on myself. <laughs> Can you know, you a, guy? Do you know a guy? Do you know a guy that has one? I've heard. <laughs> do you know a guy that has one? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man. And I heard you have a lot of insight on that. On like how how does one do that? How do you pick what photo of yourself? Do you do you just go cartoon version? Like tell us about that. All right. Uh, so I'm a big coach that makes deals with my players. Even to this day, I still make. I, I love it. I love making deals with my yeah. players because like I was always a guy that was motivated by what somebody told me I couldn't couldn't do. Mm-hmm. So the first deal was innocent. Like, hey, y'all beat. We haven't beat Blythewood in forever. Beat Blythewood. I'm gonna put a TV and a PlayStation in the locker room. Well, they beat Blythewood. The next no day, kidding. I went out and got a, a uh, got a TV and a PlayStation and put it up in the locker room. Yeah. Uh, so I don't even know what game this was. I think it might have been to get to the Upper State Championship game. We had never beaten Daniel, or they hadn't been to the Upper State Championship game forever. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I think I want to get a cartoon character. Like, I'll let y'all pick the cartoon character yeah. if we beat Daniel. Yeah. Um, and at the time now, Daniel had Brent Venerable's son yeah. playing quarterback, Jeez. crazy athlete. Dabo's son was on the team playing receiver. Uh, they had just a ton of really good players, man. Uh, and – Daniel High School is right, like right by Clemson. So all of their coaches' kids, unlimited resources. Coach Fruster done a great job. They played us early in the season. They put like a forty piece on us. Uh, we had some guys hurt, but I don't try to give them any extra motivation. I mean, the process yeah, yeah. is gonna be unprocessed. But you know, y'all beat Daniel. I'll let y'all pick out my cartoon character to get a tattoo. At the time, <laughs> for my football, <laughs> for my football camps, I had the I had the little P logo yeah. uh, created and. Uh, like Rich and Two didn't allow recruiting, so right. I designed this logo for my free football camp. And my thought was, I want every kid in this this community to know who I am. Sure. So for the free shirt I gave, I put a picture of my face, like a cartoon yeah, picture yeah. of my face on there, just for brand recognition. Like, oh, this is the coach of Ridgeview. Yeah. Uh, and it ended up working out, but uh, we won the game, and they said, uh, Coach, you should get a little P. I'm like, mm. mm. I'm like, all right, let's do it. There it is. There it is. That's so I how did you it. Do it. Came home and Katie's like, that's gotta be a joke, right? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> So she didn't even know that you were doing it? Or nah, yeah. I just came home with it. <laughs> <That's the best. laughs> just came home with it. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, it's a conversation piece because people are looking at it like, what is that on your Is own? that you? It's, on your uh, own? it's my emoji. It's a little pee. <laughs> I, what do you think Tom should get as a tattoo? Besides my face. He can get a little pee. I still got a Should I get one? Oh, you, <laughs> yeah, you want side. a little pee Actually, on Actually, no, him. I want my face on you. I thought we talked about that before. It's going to have to be something. What kind of good deal can we get for that? I don't know. See, like, I mean. It's got to be a fair we're gonna deal. We're going to come up with something. We got a fair deal. I like tattoos. I don't mind. Yeah. And, and I want it to be cool. portrait style. Like, Maybe I if it's really... you pointing at the little pee tattoo, it would be cool. Yes. Yes. I like that. Okay. Good. <laughs> we're on to something. <laughs> so, so with your kids then, what's... Yep. Um, you said you don't care if they play football, what that looks like, but yeah. there's got to be a coaching side of you that is constantly wanting to coach them in whatever they're baseball, doing and make them be the best. Mm-hmm. Baseball. Everybody signed up. Katie's got everybody signed. Lola's playing softball. Uh, Zoe is doing T-ball this year, and then Bo's like in like player pitch. And I was a really good baseball player like growing up. Really good. Yeah. So I was all-state baseball player. And only reason why I played football in college is because people told me I couldn't do it. Like in hindsight, I was a great baseball player, but I just enjoyed actual football practice mm-hmm. better than baseball practice. But seeing Boaz play, uh, it remind it gives me that the true love of baseball, cool. uh, and he's pretty good. Like, so you kind of see it. Uh, I don't want to force feed it on him, but 
uh, if there was any situation where I wasn't coaching college football, I would coach all three of those guys in baseball and softball just because uh, it brings back childhood memories of my dad out there working with me. And then, like, the attention that they don't get, they they see how much I love baseball. And they, you know, not trying to impress me, but, like, when I'm out there with them throwing the ball around, they all love it. So yeah. that's the one. Like, if I ever can sit, my, sit on my butt a little bit, just mm-hmm. be a t-ball, a softball, and a baseball coach. Coach him up in that way. Love seeing him play that. That's cool. Nice. And then we usually bring up Mark Losby at some point. He's your brother-in-law. <laughs> I got something on Mark. Yeah. Go, well, I was just gonna. I was just gonna see if you have any like insights in him. Something weird that he does. Some some funny story you want to tell. Uh, I, you know what? Mark is. I, I will share this story. Like, <laughs> so when I first. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna want to clip this. When I first when I first meet my my brother-in-law Mark like. Start talking like, you know, guys, you try to find something you can relate to. Yeah. And then the first thing, like, that's it. Like, so <laughs> I was just getting into golf. All right. And everybody tells their, like, yeah, yeah. They tell their stories, like, ah, oh, you know. And, and Coach Healy, if he hears this, he's going to, oh, I knew it. Cause, like, for Mark, this is the only time I've ever proclaimed to be a good golfer. Yeah. And I don't even know. Mark's asking me all these questions. What's your handicap? I, you know, I just play. Right. It's like, well, are you any good? Like, what do you shoot? Like, uh, I always break 100. Like, <laughs> shoot like, you know, 90. Right, right. So we go and we go play golf. Like, our first time going out, we play golf. And, like, it's an executive course, Windy Hill in Atlanta, uh, off Marietta by Katie School. And Mark, T. Buffer, oh, you go first, man. You go first. I'm playing with, like, a box set of clubs. Like, <laughs> And I've played before, but I've – I embellished. I knew I did. <laughs> so, like, when you embellish it, you know you embellish. You're on the tee, and I'm like, man, I swear I hope he shanks this shit the first one. Like, Please dribble it off the tee. And he freaking strokes a seed right down the middle of the fairway. I'm like, oh, man. Like, I'm like, oh, damn, son. Like, I'm, I'm like, you know. Right. So I can get up there and I fly, dribble one off. And I'm like, oh, shit. So instantly – I just look at it like, hey, man, like, I, I like to play, but I have, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not an excuse. It's I just go a while, full yeah. disclaimer, like. My elbows hurt. I'm not very, <laughs> I'm not very good. Help me. Yeah. You know, so if anybody can attest for my golf game, the highs and lows is Mark. Yeah. You know, and he's like, if I can say anything, he's such a genuine dude, man. I love being around him. Like, but uh, he's seen me from embellishing, saying I was a golfer, yep. to helping me navigate, figure it out to me shooting some really good scores yeah. in his presence, to me hitting consistent 300-yard drives in right. my prime. Like, he's <laughs> he's seen like he's seen it. Like, uh, he saw me make one of the craziest putts of my life at 18 of Pinehurst 2 yeah. in front of a gallery of, like, 60 people. That's like sweet. So we've got some some really good golf memories. So anything about Mark is just, like, he's yes. that guy that, if it's, the story's not too good to be, he's he, a true right. story. Yeah. He's a true story guy. Yeah. <laughs> and he's always encouraging. Like he I hate, always is. I hate what he even when he's on my team, he's like yeah. encouraging the other team. Always. Like and like good shot and like oh, and I'm like I hope they miss this. And like yeah. Randy plays out of his mind yep. with Mark. Yep. Like there's some it's sort of energy. Probably ten strokes better if I play with him on the front nine. I'm ten strokes better than if I oh, don't play with man. him on the back. But nine. there's a lot of touching and shoulder rubbing. Yeah, he, rub, he rubs my shoulder. Yeah, 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 that's controversy. That is Mark Lasky. No, he's just saying you can do this. So, I, 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 swear, you. I, I swear he was with. I fractured my elbow. You were there. We horsed it. We won that day. We won that tournament. Yes. I fractured my elbow. Like I hit a root, and my elbow just. It was the nastiest sound ever. Fractured my elbow playing golf, and Mark's. Oh, you can finished the round out. It's okay. <laughs> bro, I just right. broke my elbow. Playing golf with you. What are you talking about, man? I'm not very good at the time. Right. Man. Like, we ended up winning that tournament, though, man. Yeah. We won, oh, yeah. We, won. Back, we had two trophies. Hoisted the aggro crack. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you Now, oh, I, I wanted to ask this about for you and Mark. Um, at what distance can he beat you in a race? He can't beat me. No, but like at a like 26 twenty six miles, oh, twenty six miles, he's beating you. I'm not doing that. Well, that's what I'm saying. So is it I like four? Wanna, is it four hundred meters? I would say a four hundred. I, I I could get a four hundred meter lap around the track on uh, and beat him. That's it. You start talking about eight hundred. Nah, yeah, it's too much. I ain't doing it. Okay, I like that. That's why I want to know yeah. the threshold because I knew I knew a hundred meters. You and got him definitely throwing weight around. He knows. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> he might not be able to do one eighty five on the bench. <laughs> He okay, probably, here we I, go. Here's the bet. Here's the bet. Here here's the bet. 
Mark Losby can't do 185 10 times on the bench. <laughs> and he cannot squat. He can't squat 315 one time. No. No. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. It's not a lot. Well, but I also want to organize the 400 meter race because that sounds You want to see that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> That might be my face. He's got to lift yeah. first. He, it's, it's, oh, like, it's like levels. He'll train, though. He'll he's, train. He's got he's to gotta do the, the 185 10 times, and he's got to do the 315 one maximum squat. And then if he passes those two levels, then, then the then final boss will be the 400. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> he makes it I'm to the that. final level. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So, right. so tell so kind of in closing, tell us where people can find you if they want to. Oh, man. Oh, I'll slide people are going to be sliding into your DMs like crazy. Man, I, how, uh, how many DMs do you get a week? Oh, 70. Uh, it's ridiculous, man. The phone is is nonstop. I, I got the new. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I don't even know what my new. Mainly uh, from high school boys. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which Watch is a little my weird. Film. Watch my film, coach. I'm yeah. being slept on, coach. Yes. But I, I, I try to watch as much as I can. So I have a new. My Instagram is coach. P. Dot Parks. It used to be P. P Squizzle. Mm-hmm. It's my college. You switched it. I switched it. Professional. Now is that? Wait, did you lose all your followers? Or no, or I actually switched the name? I actually gained a ton of followers because Just by that. yeah, because yep. I had to link it to uh, to to recruiting stuff. Gotcha. Is that's the the world we live in? So yeah. they just slide in your your DM. Yeah, like uh, just send a film. I mean, sure. and like it's cool for me because I was that same kid and want an opportunity. So I try to watch as much as I can. To be right. honest. Uh, right. Uh, Twitter is uh, Coach Parks eighty four on Twitter, um, and it's the same deal. Like uh, a lot of high school, high school aspiring athletes. Yep. Um, and as much interaction I can have with the the rising seniors, um, permissible through the NCAA, I'll try to correspond with them, watch yeah. the tape, and just uh, try to get them up to games. And uh, you never know. One of the best players uh, that I've coached in my life. Uh, Grant DeBose, one of the receivers at Charlotte. Like, yeah. He was one of those kids sending me DMs. No kidding. So you can ignore me if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Ask how yeah. many people would love that kid playing on their roster right, right. now, man. Like, so um, I, I think it's it's part of it. Like, you can sit here and complain about it, or you can embrace it as, hey, man, these kids want an opportunity. And yeah. uh, an opportunity can be can be life changing and it can be uh, an explosive <laughs> player. You don't even know it. So. Yeah. Would you be open to like if people want to do one on one coaching with you, like they have their son or or whatever that wants to? Yeah, these rules are funky now. Oh, man. really? Like, so I don't know how much of that I can I can technically do. Okay. Um, it's it's weird, man. Sure. Like, because NCAA is they're the governing body, so like I'm I'm doing this. Say I'm I'm working out with somebody's kid, and then you know you know it might be a, a dead period where I, I mean I can't right. you know some of that stuff I know I can't even can't even entertain that. Sure. Stuff. I can recommend them to somebody else, but get some friendly advice if I have a prior relationship or previous relationship with somebody or if it's a true family friend or if it's family, I think that's a different story. But these rules are crazy, man. Yep. Okay. Good stuff. Well, we appreciate your time. Yeah, Thanks for being man. on. No Check them out. Thanks for having me, fellas. Here. We're here for the health of it. For the health of it.